Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Building Open Source Identity Infrastructure Session. The uh, presenters are Francisco and Nissan. Please leave yourself muted and cameras turned off during the presentation. If you'd like to ask a question, wait until the Q&A portion after the presentation or use the shared notes to the left above the user list to ask the presenter questions. Please use the chat box only for chat, not for presenter questions. If you have any tech issues, please send me, Kenny Aragon, a uh, direct message, and we will assist you in any way we can. And with that, I'll hand it off to you, you Francisco. Thank you very much, Kenny. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this talk. Um, it will be myself and my colleague, Nisar. We will be talking about our experience in building uh, open source identity infrastructure. So just a few words about myself. I am a managing directory as Tiraza. Tiraza is a, a company that is building services around open source identity and access management tools. But I'm also a member at the Apache Software Foundation and Vice President Apache Cinco. Uh, with me, I have my colleague Misa. Yes, hi. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, good day to everybody here. Thank you for attending the presentation. Um, as Francesco mentioned, my name is Misa Moyet. I work as a, a software architect at Terrasa. And likewise, I am also a member of the Apache Software Foundation and work with uh, Francesco and other folks on the Apache Syncopy project. And in parallel, if there's any time left, I also sort of chair the uh, Aperio CAS project and I've been with the project for over 10 years or so. So thank you. I'll hand it back to Francesco to get started with the presentation. Thank you, Misak. So let's first start with uh, with establishing some common ground and vocabulary to name the same things the same way. So first of all, when we say identity, what are we talking about? Um, we, we, it's something that it's all uh, in everything, in every system we interact with. So we have accounts, we have identity, and the, uh, the most important thing is to uh, understand the difference between them and to say, uh, with more confidence that account is what uh, computers are about. So there are records of information that are stored somewhere and each account rep is representing only a portion, only a view of the overall identity. An identity is, uh, the, conversely, you can see it as the, the composition of the partial views that are constituted by accounts. So it seems to be crucial to establish a relationship uh, that is correct and co as much complete as possible between accounts and identity. So how we deal with identity issues? Essentially, we recognize two approaches. One is identity management, or uh, the, 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 everything that you can do to keep identity data consistent and, syn and synchronized across repositories. So uh, essentially, is the art of keeping all accounts that are sparse in different resources, different formats, different network protocols. So to keep all this information collected together and consistent over time. Access management instead is everything that is attaining to user authentication and authorization. So who you are and what you are entitled to do on my system. Identity management and access management are complementary. When you use one, you can use the other. Often they work very well together. And out of our discussion here would be, we show uh, some use cases and the way how we keep them together. So overall, a high level, the problem you are trying to solve is starting from a situation like this, where you have uh, from the top part of the screen, several different actors of your systems. And, and on the bottom part of the screen, all, all of your systems. Naturally, uh, the system, when, when we say um, your systems, they could be on premise or on cloud. There is no difference anyway. No. So uh, we, over time, the, the, some relationships um, are established between actors and systems that are often uh, going out of control to the, the, the teams that are supposed to uh, make some order out of it. So 
with enough complexity, enough time, and enough requirements, you reach up to a situation like the following we represent in a picture. Uh, the idea of establishing a centralized identity and access management system is to move to a situation like this, where you have a point where you can take control of what's happening, where it's happening, and you, from which you can query uh, reporting, auditing, uh, you can centralize the checks, you can define policies, you can establish approvals, and you, essentially, in one word, you can take things all under control, both from a technical and a business point of view. One important thing is, if you note, the top right box is named former employees, uh, this is typically one of the, 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 the biggest troubles when you are not enforcing an IAM system, that it's, you are still allowing for former employees for some time to interact with your system. So security is, of course, just, this just while I security is, of course, one of the important items we are discussing here. So um, we, we have a, a number of uh, in, in the identity and access management tooling landscape, we have essentially, we recognize essentially three types of technologies. The first being the identity stores. So an identity store is a place where the account information is stored. So you can have traditional uh, or legacy identity stores like Active Directory, LDAP, or relational databases, or you can have nowadays identity stores in the cloud, you have Azure, you have Google Suite, you have any uh, cloud you can mention, but the principle is the same. So we are talking of places that have the storage plus some APIs on top to interact. Uh, so to place the objects, move the objects in, uh, uh, around uh, the, the store. Uh, what's the point? The identity store are historically the first identity technology that came out. Or oh, when you with identity source, each application is uh, can be managing its own authentication or provisioning separately because a store is a store, so a place where to uh, store information. Um, from an authentication point of view, users, for example, may or may not use the same password for all the applications. But why this this technology is not enough? It's not enough for several reasons, essentially because you end, end up by dealing with different technologies and technologies that could be very different, like an old uh, relational database and a cloud provider. But uh, you don't also you don't have any hierarchy in, in uh, the, the, the information. So you don't have a clear way to establish um, the, w which system you can trust more. Uh, often, then you, as a, by, by experience, you don't have. It's very difficult also to enforce policies on uh, identity stores when you have more than one. Of course, you don't have workflow uh, available, or then there are other additional issues like the fact of not being able to um, consistently foresee the infrastructure uh, management cost, because uh, as, as much as the, the organization is growing, uh, you will find even more difficult to correlate the various identity stores to each other. And finally, this is by experience, uh, very often you have applications that despite of having already available several identity stores in the infrastructure, uh, so some applications might re still require a local database uh, for some purpose to store some dedicated profile information to, uh, to, to, to work the way they, are, they were meant to, et cetera, so for various reasons. Second, the second technology we are introducing here are provisioning engines. So the idea, of the, the, the job of a provisioning engine is to keep things synchronized as much as possible. Uh, by uh, defining a high-level concept that we call the identity lifecycle management. So the identity itself becomes, becomes something you can track and you can, uh, for, for which you define a lifetime with a start and an end. Um, 
of course, provisioning engines need to need to follow to accompany the 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 the, the real identity uh, they are mapped from. So uh, everything starts with provisioning, uh, and but but then the, the the identity can move inside the organization by getting promoted, by being assigned to set certain uh, project, by making requests, by have to change their password by being notified, doing administration, et cetera. So, uh, and at the end of this life cycle, there is deprovisioning because the, the user is leaving the, the organization. Uh, one primary need for provisioning engine is to be as much customizable and flexible as possible because a provisioning engine needs to adapt itself to exist to the ex existing infrastructure uh, to existing needs, to existing flows, or need also to evolve with company needs. Uh, for several reasons we, that might be uh, appear clearer later, um, provisioning engines are focused on backend because they are connect. Essentially, uh, they they do their job uh, against applications, against identity stores, as we said before. Provisioning engine finally can communicate with applications or with identity source uh, in, a, in, a, in two distinct ways. They could be a connector uh, oriented, be, meaning that the, the target application, the identity source don't need to be changed to interact with a provisioning engine, or they might require some sort of agent, which is usually more invasive, but also uh, often more efficient. The third type of technology uh, that we use in the identity space, uh, we name it access managers. So uh, the components that take care of authentication and authorization. So several concepts or uh, the standards are involved here. We talk about single sign-on, uh, multi-factor authentication, or protocols like OAuth, OpenID Connect, SAML. So all these concepts are related to what we call access manager. Since Access Manager's job is to deal with user and user authentication and authorization, we realize that they are focused instead on front-end. Uh, we, if we try to put all the elements we've been introducing so far all together in a, in a single picture, uh, we, can, we come out with something like this, where we have the provisioning engine on the left side, the Access Manager on the right side, and then all the other components of a typical software architecture where several applications are uh, available. Uh, some of them are insisting on a given identity store, but there are also other applications like HR and CRM, uh, all controlled by the provision or identity store in the cloud that are controlled by the provisioning engine. The provisioning engine is also connected somehow. Here we are Im imagining the, 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 um, the simplest way uh, with access managers. An access manager will take care of, of authentication, so everything that is required on front end, authorization, etc. While provisioning engine will offer uh, specialized views to business help desk sysadmin, for example and reporting and auditing and governance and administration to them. Uh, so this to summarize the picture. So let, let's move to another section now that we have a common vocabulary and background. Let's, let's talk about selling open source identity and access management. So this is the iconic sentence we always by experience are learning and hearing from our customers or prospects when we start talking about identity management in the open source space. Um, you can replace IBM here with any other vendor you can name in the space. You can say Oracle, you can say Fordrop, you can say Okta, SailPoint, NTQ, uh, whatever you want. In the past, you could all even say some microsystems. But the point here is uh, finding a way to justify or to uh, highlight the, the benefit of open source in the IAM space against what vendor could offer. So what can we offer as open source IAM producer? Not, of course, mentioning the price, no? Because we are talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars 
for just the, the license and then you have the project to do. So in our case, no, let's uh, leave the, the price aside. Uh, what we could offer that vendor solutions don't. So first of all, it's the flexibility. There is nothing more flexible than a tool you can inspect or you can extend by it yourself or you can hire someone to extend. And if you're not satisfied anymore, you can replace this one with someone else. Uh, so that's also why do you don't have vendor lock-in. You don't have a black box on your infrastructure that is you know anything about uh, that is driving your identity flows. Then you have security. Security management in open source, especially when we talk about open source software that is ruled over uh, large foundations like Apirio or the Apache Software Foundation, they have a very well established and clear and reliable uh, security policy for disclosure, uh, for reporting, for um, security threats, etc. There is, uh, you have all the advantages of security management this way. And of course, uh, customers can be and often are required to be involved in the solution because the solution itself is will be designed and very flexibly adapt to the, the, the requirements that customers might offer. One important thing to, be, to beat vendor lock-in is that uh, if you are not satisfied of your contractor because you're not serving anymore, you can go and seek into the open source, the backend open source communities uh, and find someone else that can support or you can just uh, have your ICT team to work this way. Uh, the open source identity stack in our reference is composed by two pillars, one being Apache Syncope for identity provisioning and governance. So it's the provisioning engine from the slides before. The other one being a periocast for authentication, authorization, etc. Uh, that was mentioned as access manager uh, in the slides before. So now we are going to uh, into some detail, some, some technical detail about these two products and also something about their roadmaps. Um, let me leave uh, the, 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 the presenter role to Misak. Thank you, Francesco. Um, so this is the part of the presentation where, as Francesco said, we keep talking about uh, the, the solution stack and the components that um, make up the stack in terms of open source identity and access management. And the first component is the part that handles, well, the access management and authentication and authorization. It sits at the front end of this entire stack. And this is where the CAS project comes into play. CAS is, of course, short for Central Authentication Service. Many of you in the presentation might, might already know and be familiar with the project, and it is a single sign-on manager, an identity provider, an access manager, depending on your mood in the day, you know, any of those names seem, might be um, appropriate. And it is a multilingual platform in the sense that it can speak uh, many or multiple standard authentication protocols uh, to integrate with applications and you know verify identity and uh, collect uh, user attributes and claims and so on and so forth. And it's been a project that has been part of the J6 slash Aperio portfolio uh, from almost the beginning, if not the very beginning, and has been around since, I don't know, mid 2003-ish, five-ish. And so in one sense, it's it can be seen as legacy software. It's been in production since 2000, mid 2000s. So the current, the current uh, version and the current status of the CAS project is, is as follows. The current release line is based on top of version 6.3. And this is the release that is currently in maintenance and is, I guess, appropriate for production. This is what you would call, quote unquote, the stable release. And the developer, developer community and the broader community in general was working on the next release of the software, which is the next feature release. And that would be under the 6.4 release line. So I'll sort of give you a quick status update on what the current state of the world is, and then we'll briefly take a look at what the next state of the world might be uh, in the coming 6.4 line. So today, as I mentioned, the, the current stable slash maintenance release is the 6.3 line. You can see some screenshot, screenshots here on the slide that present or demonstrate some of the capabilities that, are, that exist in this particular release line. You could have access to multi-factor authentication with FIDO2 or WebAuthn. You could Log in with a QR code and scan a code on your mobile phone and log in uh, sort of transparently. 
You have the ability to set up Google Authenticator for multi-factor authentication and register multiple accounts and manage multiple accounts and so on and so forth. And this is generally the, the latest um, uh, evolution of the software in this particular state that continues to add incremental features and enhancements and, and such in a way that um, is, is compatible and without too many breaking changes, uh, especially at the, at the data, data layer and uh, potentially at the API layer. Um, so when we move on to <clears throat> move on to the next release of the software, of course, this has been the CAS 6.4 release line. It's been in development for a uh, better part of last year, 2020. And we're getting very, very close to actually releasing this, this particular release, sometime in mid to late summer 2021, summer of this year. And uh, there are a large number of features and releases, I'm sorry, features and enhancements baked into the 6.4 line, various options for MFA, uh, integrations with Amazon, uh, command line clients, compatibility with Java, latest versions of Java, and general updates across the entire platform and framework. I have listed some links here on this slide that I think might be beneficial for those of you who are interested to follow the development or get more information about the project and status and things that happen, as well as information around tutorials and walkthroughs and such. And of course, I, I also decided to list the end of life schedule for the project in case you are planning an upgrade or thinking about an upgrade or thinking about deploying uh, a solution brand new. Uh, these are the dates and these, this is the schedule that the project goes by in terms of keeping releases alive and, and, and keeping them in maintenance uh, for the time to come. And I should also mention sort of at the end of this particular portion that CAS 6.4 is really the foundation of a brand new module in the Apache Syncopy ecosystem that does handle access management and web access and authorization. And it is something that I think Francesco will um, provide additional details for you in a little bit. So I'll leave you for now, I'll get back to Francesco. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. So uh, briefly, uh, again, about, uh, about Syncope, the project itself is, uh, as we said, a provisioning engine. So what it's doing, we have a, 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 um, a, a simple screenshot of the dashboard in the admin console. Uh, so essentially you can, you, you, you want to place uh, users, groups, devices, or whatever, uh, you want to pull it from uh, the places where they are, so they're through, from the identity stores, and you, you want to make some changes and then provision to other or the same identity stores. Uh, you have a workflow features based on Flowable uh, that offer multi-level approval or request management. Uh, you can do audit and reporting. You have a full ad capable admin UI of, of which you are seeing a screenshot that is controlling the system in all of its aspects. And you also have a self-service UI that is allowing for uh, self-registration, social registration, password reset, and any um, profile update and any other operation you might you might want to offer to your end users uh, the product itself is 100 percent restful it offers uh, a rest interface to do all identity operations uh, it offers uh, features of scheme it implements schemes 2.0 uh, protocol and one very important aspect of sync that is at, at the core of its design uh, is the ability to allow for extension uh, and adaptation on, in all the environments is deployed. And you can do such extension, you can build such extensions, both in Java and Groovy, which allows runtime uh, changes and adaptation. Um, here I'm rewarding uh, a few links you might find useful from the project sources, the mailing lists that are the primary way to interact with the project team and also to ask questions, etc. There will be a wiki page uh, we have for our roadmap uh, about release. The current release branch is the 21X, uh, from which we have released it, uh, Sync of 209, 219 uh, in April, back in April. And we are expecting another release, uh, maintenance release 2110 uh, by, by the end, by possibly the end of summer. Uh, this this line, uh, this release branch to one X is currently the stable production code that is deployed in a, in a, in, a, in all of these places. Uh, but 
we are preparing and we will still get a few points something maintenance so i'm i'm expecting we will have a, a few uh maintenance releases more but the big work that is has been done during this uh, the, the the last two years is now concentrating as misa was uh, suggesting in uh, uh, apache sync 3.0 uh, you have a link also for the design notes from which this picture was was taken uh, that has, um, for which we have prepared some sort of uh, jump from the, 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 the strict provisioning uh, area to the broad IAM uh, featuring uh, for, for, for all systems. So besides the existing core console and end users, these are the, the modules that exist also in 2.1, we have a new, uh, a couple of new modules one is named WA Web Access. Here in the picture, you can see it as Web Login. This was the original picture that is essentially uh, based on CAS 6.4. Uh, and a API gateway that is now named SRA that is based on Spring Cloud Gateway. So the two, these two new modules are essentially enabling the Syncope uh, as a platform for that could be deployed flexibly so if you only want provisioning only want uh access management or you want both you also want um uh, api gateway slash reverse proxy so whatever you need uh will be based can, can, can be done by this flexibly flexible deployment and one very important thing is that you can get all of uh the features uh, from uh, each component centralized and in management from the syncope admin ui so you would from the ui you can at runtime make your configuration changes for the web access module and the, the connected cas instance will uh, adapt itself to the new configuration you define a new route for your api gateway and the connected spring cloud gateway instance will add the new route immediately so uh, we are trying to find, a, uh, we hope this will be a, a, the next step for, to have an open source solution to implement several aspects of the uh, IAM features uh, to enable more um, competition with vendor products. Uh, from a, a technology point of view, we are, the Synco 3 is, will be based on Spring Boot 2.5. It will require JDK 11, but uh, from, the, the builds are running also against GDK uh, 17 early access today. So this is about technology. Uh, the final part of the presentation would be to show uh, some of our, uh, some of our uh, success stories that we have been uh, delivering for open source IAM tools. So first one I'm going to briefly present you is about University of Florence in Italy. Uh, we have uh, about 150,000 users with students, teachers, staff, and all of these users need to are coming from different sources. It could be uh, LDAP, Active Directory, databases, and need to be provisioned in turn to different uh, identity stores. Uh, we, we have to be uh, to connect the system itself with the national authentication system that in Italy is named SPEED, based on SAML2, uh, and also to provide self-service features for uh, students and teachers. So all of them was built on Syncop and CAS, naturally. Uh, the, 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 the team itself from university was involved in development. They are, they've been opening also pull requests on upstream systems for the bugs they found. So we found this as a very a uh, neat way to cooperate with an external team. The second case I'm going to present to you is about a cruise line in North America. Um, well, I, I, we haven't had the authorization to disclose its name, but it's a very large uh, cruise line. And here, the, this, this project was also um, quite uh, difficult to approach because we had to orchestrate the identity and accesses across shore and uh, several ships. So uh, we had to keep consistency to deal with this connection, uh, to deal with batch, with events. Uh, and uh, in this case, we had to develop an integration with Apache Kafka. 
um, we the the, 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 the from an authentication point of view, we have both OpenID Connect and SAML2 enabled. Uh, Google Auth uh, for multi-factor authentication. So a very structured and embolded project. The number of users in total is not very high. We're talking about a few thousand. But the very the most involved part was to uh, design and orchestrate the identity flows from ship from shore to ships and vice versa. Hey, Francisco. And, Yes. Sorry to interrupt. We're running up on time now. It's it's uh, ten forty-five. Oh, okay. I I'm almost finished. Just this slide about a large food service distributor in North America. Please have a look. And this uh, an healthcare institution in northern Italy with all the connected existing application standard features and so on. If you need more information, you can reach up us at the website. Uh, we are linking here and also uh, I think the links in all these slides will be uh, available after the presentation. Okay, and it did like it looked like Dimitri uh, was looking to see if somebody could paste the Syncope 3 design notes into the chat. Okay, sure, no problem. So I'm going to do that. Thank you. All right, looks okay. like that's it. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks to you. Thanks very much. Bye for now.